Good morning, everybody. My name is Adriana Valenzuela. I am the focal point for education, training, and public awareness of UNFCCC. We welcome all of you to the Young and Future Generation Day at COP21 in Paris, this historical conference. It is an honor for me to welcome our speakers today to give these messages about young people. The first, Secretary General Envoy, Ahmed Amendawi. We have a delegate who will brief us about the results of the Conference of Youth that mobilized 5,000 young people. Rai and Noil Outdoor, who will also present their views on the Conference of Youth. And we have the global music competition because we are talking how we can empower young people using music and using videos. And the second winners, we have a video competition. We have Charles Pate and Sarasvati Ukdawa. And Miro, who is one of our partners' organizations for organizing these events and activities. Then I would like to give the floor to Ahmed Abedawi, the Secretary General Envoy on Youth. Well, thank you, Adriana. And uh, very good morning to everyone. Uh, I, uh, I'm very happy to be here today and uh, wish a happy Youth Day to everyone. Uh, youth Day and uh, uh, the Day of the Future Generations as well. Uh, I've seen this morning the opening of this Youth Day with the Executive Director of uh, UNFCCC and uh, uh, with active participation from young people. Uh, I would, that I would like to thank uh, UNFCCC for their hard work in organizing uh, the, the different events and activities during this Youth Day. My thanks as well go to, to uh, the Yango, the youth constituency of the UNFCCC, and all the youth activists and youth organizations, individuals and organizations and networks have been working hard and tirelessly over the past few months and, and leading up uh, to, to this Paris conference by building momentum, by generating uh, and collecting inputs from young people around the world. I'm uh, very impressed and inspired by the commitments of young people. Uh, before the COP, as you all know, there was uh, the COI, which is the conference in youth, uh, the 11 conference in youth, uh, which was organized with, uh, with uh, uh, amazing energy and commitment by uh, many young volunteers here in France and uh, across the world. We have seen young people coming together from all uh, corners of our planet uh, to, uh, at, uh, after the tragic events that uh, uh, took place in Paris here and the uh, to send a message of solidarity with France, with Paris, and to send a strong call to action with the, to, to save our planet. Uh, the COI, which I was very honored to join and speak at the opening, it's, uh, it was a great success, and I believe uh, the result of that COI uh, conference in youth was a, a youth manifesto, uh, which I'm sure our colleagues and the friends from the uh, the COI organizers will be sharing some of the key messages that emerged from that conference in youth with all of you. Uh, we have seen young people taking the streets around the world and uh, raising their voices, actively participating in social media and different platforms with that uh, main objective of uh, pushing all leaders and negotiators and politicians uh, to reach that uh, ambitious and equitable agreement here uh, at the COP21. I think the word uh, historic has been used so many times, and uh, it's been used for, for a good reason. Uh, but let me remind everyone that what's at stake today is the present and the future of this generation of young people, and indeed the future generations. My message to this COP is uh, to uh, support and extend every single possible support to, to the youth activists who are gathered here, and the many more who could not make it to Paris, but they are doing actions in their own communities uh, with, the, with the same objective. Uh, we need to reach this agreement, and we need to have an ambitious agreement. The United Nations has been very honored to work with many youth activists, whether through UNFCCC, UNEP, UNDP, and many other agencies uh, and offices to support uh, youth activism and actions during uh, the, this uh, and in the lead-up to this uh, COP21. In fact, the Secretary General, when he arrived to Paris, the first meeting he decided to have was with youth activists and uh, civil society representatives. So that was his first meeting, and in his opening remarks at the, at the COP, he referred to that meeting and referred to the, 
high expectations and uh, legitimate ones as well uh, that civil society and youth representatives have from this, this important and historic uh, conference. Uh, I think uh, during this youth day we'll be seeing so many different youth events uh, uh, and why these youth events uh, are important for the COP. Uh, they are, uh, I, I would not use even the word they are side events. Um, for me, these are uh, central reminders for why we need to accelerate this negotiation process and reach the agreement. The youth day serves as a reminder and brings this sense of urgency to the negotiations. And uh, I will continue to urge young people to raise their voices and to uh, use this day as a platform uh, to remind everyone that what's at stake today is basically the rights and interests of this generation of young people and future generations. Uh, as I said, we uh, will be participating in different uh, events during the day, and uh, uh, we, we truly hope that uh, the messages that emerge from the COI and the messages from young people uh, will find uh, listening ears, basically, by the negotiators, and they will take some of these key messages that came from the COI and the manifesto of young people, uh, and it will find its way to, uh, to, to, the, to the agreement. Uh, young people continue to watch closely this, uh, this negotiations and, uh, and I will be uh, uh, extending any possible support needed from our side. Uh, but again, I think the credit here should all entirely goes to, to the youth activists who, who really worked uh, tirelessly in building this global momentum. And we have seen uh, the result of that coming with the social media and the actions in the streets around the world. Uh, so this is a day to celebrate this youth engagement and a day to send that reminder to all negotiators. Uh, I uh, once again would like to thank you, NFCCC, Yango, and all the partner organizations and uh, uh, many youth activists around the world who could not make it. I hope if they are watching this press conference, they would know that uh, even if you could not make it here, your voices are very well heard uh, at the negotiations and uh, the other youth activists who have made it to Paris uh, would spare no efforts and uh, making your voices uh, resonating basically in the negotiation rooms around uh, around the COP21. Uh, let's hope for the best. Let's hope for the agreement that will satisfy all of us. Uh, but uh, before that, we should no take nothing for granted and use the remaining dates to continue pushing hard and pressing leaders to reach that agreement. I thank you very much. Thank you, Ahmed. And on behalf of the UNFCCC Secretariat, I would like to thank you for your commitment, for your energy to make possible that the voices of young people are heard in the international, national and local level. Thanks a lot. Now I would like to invite one of the youth delegates who will be presenting about the results of the 11th Conference of Youth. She is Ra Hi Ralitela, and please share with us what happened at the COI. Um, so I'm Zeyra Alitea, and at COI 11, we, we are ready now to change our model of societies. This is a message we wanted to, to send for a more sustainable and united world. To achieve a profound change, we need all the citizens and the stakeholders to take actions. The objective of COI 11 were to encourage young people from 116 nationalities to get involved into climate change issues, getting inspired develop their commitments and skills to invite them to be agents of change. The spirit of COI 11 was based on hard work of young volunteers with different backgrounds and with the same concern about climate change. This year, we wanted the event to be inclusive. We had several calls around the world called the local COIs. Every COI was connected to the Paris event. We shared several sessions uh, with them uh, we listen to into into each other conferences. Um, we we have moments to exchange together. We also participate in the manifesto writing. We wanted to integrate people that couldn't come to France with local koi, uh, with local koi events. Young people were able to share and their concern regarding their region and specific solutions and be part of the dynamic. We talked. Uh, to a wide audience from beginners to experts. That's why the program was extremely diverse. We discussed daily issues as well as global and scientific ones through more than 250 conferences, workshops, film, projections. 
artworks also. Our goal was, was to reach as many, as many people as possible by acknowledging their different interests and perspective. And I would like Noeli to finish what I wanted to say. So please come. Come, Noeli. Thank you. Uh, sorry, we thought we'd have multiple speakers for Koi because we were such a big group organizing it. So just to finish on what Zoe said, uh, we wanted people to understand that climate change was interlinked to multiple issues. So we proposed 10 thematics connected to climate change, such as economic, finance, citizen participation, or lifestyle. We tried to have a, a wide range of stakeholders around the table, so of course citizens, but also companies, politicians, NGOs, and youth groups. We invited them as long as they, were, they shared the desire of creating a dynamic positive change. These three days of co-creation allowed participants to create their own solutions and to choose their own path. For example, the, some participants from 55 different countries decided to work on the manifesto. Others made official commitments through the Belief Project, which is a digital artwork. Mm -hmm. The Make It Real space welcomed participants to brainstorm on innovative projects. Furthermore, COI 11 was a place to question our beliefs and our actions. We are aware, aware that taking actions implies understanding the context, the possibilities, and the outcomes of our actions to ensure that we are achieving the best possible impact. Through COI 11, we hope that many young people are aware of the complexity and multidimensionality of our situation and have been inspired to implement solutions. We have started an impact assessment of COI 11, as well as a document giving advice on creating a COI and we hope to share them with Morocco for COI 12 next year, as well as any other youth groups who would like to organize similar events. Thank you very much. It had been the biggest conference of youth ever. Then congratulations for all your hard work. Now uh, I would like to invite the two next speakers. Young people are using social media, videos, music as a tool to empower others and to raise awareness on climate change. We have the two winners of the Global Youth Video Competition with us. They are Charles Bade from Uganda and Sarasvati Updawa from Nepal. Please share with us about your video and also your experience. Please, Charles. Thank you very much. I'm uh, Dr. Charles Bate. I'm the founder of Tree Adoption Uganda. Today, as I sit before you, the world looks at me as the winner of the UN Youth Video Award. But to me, I'm a simple torchbearer, a torchbearer for all young people around the world that are taking action against climate change. Dele Oni in Nigeria, Seka Ayu in Indonesia, Hosio in Panama City, these are all young people who are taking proactive action today. The young people who have become accustomed to the nation that we are no longer the leaders of tomorrow, we are the leaders of today. My, vi my video focuses on the work that my organization does, that is the Tree Capital Program, which leverages climate change mitigation and adaptation activities to empower unemployed youths into self-made entrepreneurs. We work with young people in the rural communities in Uganda to bring out the various actions that youths are taking to build resilience against climate change in their farming communities. It's a call out to all young people around the world that we no longer need to wait for decisions made in our various parliaments or even decisions made in the UN to take action. We actually have the propensity. We are actually the most illustrious generation of young people to grace this planet. And we are the hope of a sustainable future for our planet. It is a reminder that climate change might be the biggest threat that humanity faces but as young people, we are the only hope that this planet have for a sustainable future. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot, Charles. And then, Sarasvati, what is your video about? 
Good morning, everyone, and warm welcome. My name is Saraswati Upadhyay from Nepal, and uh, well, uh, Nepal is uh, really a vulnerable country on basis of climate change impact. And I think, as a youth, uh, today's youth are really energetic. They have innovative ideas, and they are also good communicators. So through social media and networking sites, uh, we can communicate whatever knowledge, awareness we have about climate change so that we can make climate change resilience. So in my video, I have portrayed the vulnerability of uh, my hometown, Pokhara, and how we were having glacial lake outbursts in our city and how it affected people and how I was motivated to take action from an individual level and to just make my efforts more prominent towards climate change defying. Uh, as a uh, novice documentary maker and filmmaker, I take part in documentary making that makes awareness that can be used as publicity material and publicity um, uh, like articles through my blogging, through my YouTube accounts, so that it can work as awareness, awareness raising, uh, maybe, uh, yeah, awareness raising materials for the public and youths, especially focusing youths, uh, as I have little bit of skill in making filmmaking. So, uh, yeah, my video can be understood by lay audience as well. It doesn't have any complex idea that about, uh, I, I, as I don't have any idea about geopolitics of climate change, uh, it is really simple video. And yeah, uh, it was really a good experience and uh, to be a winner too. Uh, so, yeah, I am really motivated to work with organizations that can, uh, that can effectively work for climate change resilience. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Sarasvati. And working on climate change is mobilizing partnership between the governments, young people, civil society organizations, and the private sector. Then I would like to invite one of our partners, that is Miro Polser from the International Association for the Advancement uh, of Innovation, who will share with us what is the music contest on climate change. Miro, please. Thank you very much, Adriana. Welcome, everybody. So uh, I'm here representing the Global Challenges Youth Music Contest on Youth and Climate Change, which we organized together with uh, the Action for Climate Empowerment team of uh, UNFCCC and with uh, the Management of Social Transformation Program of UNESCO. Uh, we have uh, asked young people to, uh, sub uh, to produce and submit uh, music video clips about their vision for uh, uh, climate action. And we have received 45 submissions from uh, 28 countries. And uh, uh, through online voting and uh, jury voting, we have identified two winners. One uh, 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 is Adeline Suvana from Indonesia. She is on her way here. So uh, unfortunately, a few minutes uh, will uh, be too late, probably. And uh, the jury award winner is Juteskat uh, Martinez from the Earth Guardians really uh, two wonderful uh, global youth leaders who use music to uh, raise awareness in their communities and globally about the issue of climate change. And it's really uh, the climate challenge will need that everybody becomes active and everybody, uh, we act as a global community and music has really a, a magical power in this sense and therefore uh, I think that uh, we will go on with this initiative also for COP22 uh, and also for other uh, global challenges, uh, global conferences, to get young people empowered and engaged. Thanks a lot, Miro. And I would like to invite Mr. Rol Holuf, the Regional Minister for Sustainable Development and Energy, 
from Austria to share uh, with us the announcement for the next Youth Conference. Youth Conference 2016, Youth Climb on Youth and Climate Change. Please, Minister. Thank you very much. A warm welcome from my side. Uh, if you don't know what uh, the Encore Network is, this is an environment conference of regions of Europe, and it's taking place every two years. And uh, 2060 is taking place in the southern states of Austria in Carinthia. And there are about 130, 140 regions of Europe working together to fight against climate change this next two years. And on the side of this conference of regional ministers, there is a youth conference taking place one week earlier where about 50, 40 uh, young people can work together in workshops. And then there's a cross point where the young people meet the ministers. And this is very exciting because the ministers, the politicians, uh, come to know what the people and the young people want uh, them to do. Because, you know, the future is a place where young people have to live in and uh, the politicians are just working on the now on and not on the future. So this is very important and I hope a lot of young people will register for this youth conference in 2060 in the September in Carinthia. The homepage is uh, www.encoreweb.eu EU, and this is the uh, logo for this. I hope a lot of young people will come here to Carinthia because uh, the living is free, just the journey we are working on sponsoring. And so please come to us and work and tell the politicians what you're thinking about them and the future. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot, Minister. And uh, uh, we will have time for two questions. Then please, the, it is open. Please. I have found over the years that it's the youth statements and manifestos that say what really needs to be said. And I was wondering, in your manifesto, are you dealing with militarism? For example, the military contributions to greenhouse gas emissions and also the exorbitant military, global military budget. I was wondering if you're dealing with that. Thank you. We will take another question. Okay. Over there. Is there any other question? Please. Hi, Alexander Pfeiffer, my name from Young European Leadership. I was wondering, um, um, you are representing the, the global youth and um, I think that's a very important um, thing to do. I was just wondering, there are all the decisions we make today will affect future generations as well. And um, Historically, future generations are not represented in any way in the decision-making process. So I think this organization is the closest to future generations, and I was wondering if this is something you consider. So do you see yourself as a representative for future generations as well? <clears throat> Sorry. Thanks a lot. We have one minute more. Then I will invite every speaker, starting with Sarasvati, to reply to the question in 10 Seconds. Sarasvati, please. Your final message. Final measure? Yeah, I would try to take actions from individual level, yeah, as I have been doing that. Uh, whatever actions uh, can be changed, uh, maybe small thoughts that we can make with, uh, for the big change. Yeah, thank you. Charles? Well, my final message uh, essentially is to fellow young people, we need to stop asking ourselves whether the limited resources that we have can actually make an impact. But we need to start asking ourselves how best we can use those limited resources to create positive social impact in our communities. That's my only message to the young people of the world. Thank you. Amit? Yeah, and the question about intergenerational equity, I think uh, um, uh, 
uh, we, we clearly have uh, a growing interest from many youth groups in this, uh, this concept. Uh, clearly, it was uh, more defended by young people than any other age groups, I would say. Uh, one of the events that we had, and I'm uh, looking here to our friend Renee, who organized this uh, uh, side event, focusing on the role of young people also and, and uh, championing the, the generation equity. And I think the rise of future generations, it would be uh, tricky to say that anyone could speak for the future generations, but we clearly see that more young people are taking the lead and, and pushing for the need to consider the rise of future generations. I am very encouraged that we, we welcome anyone to champion that as well. I could speak on behalf of my friends here. We welcome any age group, any organization to defend the right of future generations. But as things stand today, I see the most vocal forces in defending the rights and uh, uh, interests of future generations, to the best of our knowledge, at least as of today, uh, are the uh, youth groups. And uh, uh, we, we are also encouraged that in the negotiations there are more uh, progress being made in acknowledging that term. In fact, uh, the Secretary General's report in 2013, uh, we, we realized that uh, the rise of future generation has been mentioned in over 25 agreements and uh, conventions and treaties so far. Uh, so that that highlights that there's more interest and more more recognition, I would say, in and uh, and looking to the, the to the rise of future generations. But, um, but we uh, will continue to push for that uh, along with the, with the youth rights and priorities. Thank you very much to all of you. And uh, with this, we conclude the press conference on occasion of the Young and Future Generation Day. Thanks a lot. Yeah, yeah. No, I think yeah. maybe she could answer the question about the military. Yes. Uh -huh. Just the military, we, we didn't, just answer your question quickly, we didn't add it to the manifesto. Thank you.